Given the quite frankly poor form of games revolving around the Alien franchise in the past, it wouldn't surprise us one bit if you approached Alien Isolation with the kind of caution usually reserved for entering the quarantine section of a derelict alien spacecraft. However, with Creative Assembly now at the helm and a different approach being taken, Isolation could finally be the Alien game you've been waiting for. You play as Amanda Ripley, daughter of Ellen, who, when she left Earth, promised her daughter that she would return home for her 11th birthday. It's now 15 years after the events of the first film, and Amanda, now a Wayland yutani employee, hears that the flight recorder of the Nostromo has been recovered on a remote trading station. So off she goes to find out what happened to her mother. The footage you're seeing here takes place towards the middle section of the game and is the same section we played on PS4 at a recent hands-on event. Creative Assembly wanted to re-establish the alien as something you're really scared of and as such, this is the only alien in the entire game. It will hunt you down as you move around the ship and using some very clever AI design can even learn your avoidance patterns and adapt accordingly. Encounters like this, where it's just you and the alien, won't happen often but when they do, the developers hope that you'll be suitably scared of it. But is all this really enough? We asked some of our industry colleagues for their thoughts on whether Creative Assembly can save the Alien franchise with Isolation. I think the interesting thing about Isolation is that it's an Alien game, not an Aliens game. Um, when we talk about the Alien franchise, what we really mean is Cameron's movie Onwards, which is a series of movies that got increasingly shared, and then a bunch of surrounding material that kind of expanded the universe and added everything else and tied in with Predator, and that led to the run of decent games, necessarily. But everything else has been kind of based on that kind of like Marines versus Aliens format. And that pretty much is also the basis for like an entire side of video games. So taking all of that away, which I believe Creative Assembly are doing, what they showed us didn't hint at anything along the lines of dropships and pulse rifles or anything, suggests that it might not even feel like an Alien franchise game, right? Like it might not even fit into the narrative of does this particular franchise need saving? Because you just make something completely different that uses some of the same visual ideas and atmosphere that the, the original movie had. It's a first-person horror game rather than a shooter, which it, you know it's amazing that no one's really taken that step before with a, you know, a movie franchise that was primarily about horror before it was about action. Um, and most importantly, as well as succeeding as a horror game from what I've, what I've played so far, it also succeeds in sort of letting you inhabit that movie set space and just being able to walk around without feeling like you're in like an amusement park ride or anything. You really do feel like you're on like the 1979 movie set. Remarkably, for a game based on a movie franchise, its aspirations don't appear to be totally cinematic, right? Like if you look at games trying to be movies, it tends to be, and trying to be B movies, um, it, try, it tends to be, you know, cutscene scripted sequences and, you know, linear turret sections. What we saw was actually systems driven in the sense that it was an AI driven encounter that was open ended that created an effect like a movie but without requiring the player to stand in a particular place and look at a particular thing. And that's a much more intelligent way of creating atmosphere and narrative through game design. What Alien Isolation is trying to do is create that sense of horror from the 1979 film, that, that sense of dread and fear about wondering whether it's around the corner, wondering if it's nearby, and being stalked by this alien creature. They're not overdoing the authenticity thing, but they're using a couple of sound cues that you'll recognise from the movie and then adding their own kind of, their, you know, their own score and their own sound effects over that. And, uh, you know, your, your ears are just attuned to everything that's going on around you. The tension is really built up as much through the sound as it is through the graphics, which are fantastic in themselves, you know, the, the shadows around everything and the, the subtle lighting effects that are going on and the sort of the analogue feel of everything. It's going to be uh, really exciting to see how it pans out. 
From what we played, it's hard to say how the rest of the game will pan out. This section was superb and genuinely scary, but the challenge will be keeping the level of tension high during the rest of the game. One thing is clear though, this really looks and sounds like an alien game, thanks in part to the three terabytes of unreleased material including ship schematics and concept artwork Creative Assembly have had access to along with the original score and musical sound effects used in the film, which allowed them to create a very convincing atmosphere full of beeps and sounds you'd expect to hear on a decommissioned trading station on the fringes of space. And as an extra step towards authenticity, CA say you'll not see any tech in the game that isn't in the film, keeping everything, as they put it, lo-fi sci-fi. Alien Isolation is one of the only games we've seen so far that uses the new features of the next-gen controllers. If you're playing on PS4, the light bar will flash in time with the beeps of the motion sensor to give you an indication of how close the danger is. It's a really great little touch and we've been told is not the only one the developers have planned. So it's all shaping up nicely and with its release date set for the end of this year, there's still plenty of time to make this the alien game we've always wanted.